Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He lives, he lives, he lives. It's time to work. He lives, he lives, he lives. So if he lives, is he real to you? Yes. If he lives, is he real to you? Praise the Lord. We've journeyed down this road 14 years, going on 15 years this month, starting our 15th year, first Sunday of the month. Uh, in June 1998, services began here in the Lord's Disciples Ministries of Whosoever Will. It's been a long journey for 14 years, but it seems like it's only been a day. I mean, This is not your traditional church setting. I guess you could realize that, don't you? It's not your original traditional church setting. But you know, I don't guess that we would have recognized the early church either, would we? In the catacombs. On the street passing by each other making the fish sign in the sand or the dirt. In the corner, wherever you could share Jesus and the power of God with somebody. You know, it was all about a transfer then. It was about a transfer. Christ transferred the anointing to the disciples. Breathed them. And it's still about a transfer from the disciples to the 3,000 to the 5,000 to the church being added to daily. It's a transfer. That I might decrease, as, Paul, as uh, John the Baptist said, that I might decrease, that he might increase. Yeah. Amen. That's the process. I might run a while with the baton and I got hurt in 2004. Keith and I ran for since 98. People of kind, people of wind, praise God, people are being called to ministry today. Yes, sir. From the front pew to the back pew. Peter had it right when he said we were called to be a royal priesthood, didn't he? You're called to be a royal priesthood. Whenever he, when Peter made that statement, he realized it wasn't about him no more. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's about, Arnold, it's about you being a royal priesthood. Praise the Lord. You know, it was a few months ago, a few months back, I wasn't hardly able. I was getting, you know, been sick ever since I got hurt. 2004, I went through it. Eight years of laying on the deathbed about it, it seemed like. The medicine had me on shut your organs down. It's a hospice medicine. So, uh, God got me off of it. Praise God. <coughs> Two or three months ago. I don't know the date right now, but it's been two or three months now. And I've got a renewing in my spirit. But when 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 Pastor Keith got down and 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 I got down and everything, the Lord handed him had handed Rick the baton. And he's been preparing ever since. When we were having a meeting at the first of the year of January, Rick came to me and said, you need me? The Lord said, I can help. And he's been preparing ever since the first of the year for this day right here. Bless you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm excited. But you know, I know right now that he can't stand here of himself. He can't stand here of himself. Do you know what? You all pay you all play a vital part in in this service. You know, from the front to the big to the end, you all play a vital part. You might be set by somebody that needs to come to the altar that just a little tinge of fear in them to step out. You might be sitting here and you see the minister struggling because he feels like he's not getting any participation. And whenever, whenever you get to a place and a crossroad in the Word and everything, and you don't hear an amen or you don't hear a praise God or something like that, you know, it gets harder to go. It gets harder to go. You're the motivating power, the Holy Spirit, and you're the motivating force that, that keeps the flow going. You can shut the flow down or you can you can motivate the flow. Yes, yes. One person in the service can can the Holy Spirit will leave. Hinder us. Want to pass the Yes. Yeah. So I want I want to encourage you right now. Brother Rick standing up here for his first time. I want to encourage you. To encourage him. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And any of us, all the way to every one of us, our righteousness is filthy rags, so there's no big means we'll use. Okay? Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
The word says, beginning in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. So we all already have our ticket bought, folks. If you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, your, your ticket has been bought and paid for by His blood. And God will bring us with Him. Verse 15 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not forbid them which are asleep. So for this mortal body, if you believe in the Lord, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So your body then sleeps until that day of resurrection. Verse 16, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. 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 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, praise God. Yes, Lord. Meet the Lord in the air. What a truth. Can't wait. Let him want. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Does that bring comfort to your heart today? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I see a lot of you not saying anything. Yes. Amen. Amen. Does that bring comfort to your heart today? Yes. Yes. To know that we will have that appointment to meet Him in the air? Yes. Come on. It's already been said, folks. It's said. It's done. Yes. So that speaks of the rapture. The calling away, as the Word of God declares it to be. And after that, like I said, is appointed each man to die, and after that, the judgment. That's the second thing today. The judgment. We find support in Scripture for that in Revelations chapter 20 and 21. Turn with me, with me in your Bible there to Revelations chapter 20 today.
see, like I said before, I'm going to say it again today. We are not sinners because we sin. The fact that we sin does not make us a sinner. We were sinners from the foundation of the earth. We had a first sin. We are we sin because we are sinners. The only other solution to that is to accept Jesus and put down that sin and turn away from it and repent. If we don't find ourselves doing that, then we will not be recorded in that book of life. The pen is still in the author's hand, as our text says. And that pen is dipped in blood. The blood of Jesus. Then turn over to uh, Revelation 21. Maybe just one page for you. Revelation 21, verses 7 and 8. Revelation 21, verse 7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, yes. and I will be his God, yes. and he shall be my son. We've got to overcome, God. folks. Yes. Praise you. Don't tell to quit. Giving up time is over. Play time is over. It's time to get serious. Yes, sir. So I, I don't know when the Lord is going to come. I don't know when any of us in this room are going to die. Yes. What I do know is that we're one day closer to those things happening than we were yesterday. Amen. Right. So you better be ready. Yes. You need to overcome. In order to overcome, you've got to stay with the course. Yes. Paul said, I've run the good race and fought the good fight. Yes. Do you think it's not a struggle? Yes. He didn't say, I walked the good walk, wrestled a little bit, and then gave up. Did he? He said, I fought the good fight. Yes. Do you think you're fighting the devil? Yes, and how do we do that? By putting on the whole armor of God. Yes, yes. You don't have the whole armor of God on you. You stand defenseless, naked before Him, and He will have His way with you. Amen. You better put on that armor and be ready to go, go to the fight. Verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. Amen. The second death there. It was real, folks. It's burned with fire and brimstone. In fact, Jesus talked about it in Mark chapter 9, verse 43. It says where many times he saw there, 43 through, through 48, there's the fire, the lake of fire, which the firm died of not. The fire is never quenched. Did he say that, Pastor? Amen. Mark chapter 9, verses 43 through 48 say just that thing. Where the fire is never quenched and the worm dies not. I don't know about you, but I, that doesn't sound very good to me. And as Pastor David brought out in Sunday school today, a lot of folks don't believe that. They won't go ahead and take their chances because the devil has promised them eternal life. Well, he's promised his eternal death. And he has no position to make a promise like that because only God gives life. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. It's God's Spirit that came down and breathed in the nostrils of Adam and brought him to life. And that's the Spirit that lives within us today. Yes. Amen. Wasn't the devil that did it. So he doesn't have the, the authority to make that kind of promise. Amen. Romans chapter 14, verse 10 through 12 also give us a glimpse into that. Terrible place. Turn with me if you will. Romans 10. Sorry. Romans 14. Judging others, judging each other in a harsh manner. 
Someone thinks they're better than you, they're going to go ahead and point fingers and judge. They want to find your faults. It's easier for them to see your faults than it is to see their own. But in verse 10, it says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Did it say some knees will bow? Did it say some tongues will confess? Every single person that's ever been born on planet earth since Adam till the end of time when God calls it over will stand at the, at the, at the throne of God. They will then kneel and confess. Now you have two options. You can confess the Lord Jesus as your Savior today or you can confess your sin before God when you get there. The choice is yours. That's good. That's good word. So we talked about the rapture or the death, which was first. The second was the judgment. The third then comes the punishment. And we refer to Luke's gospel in chapter 16 for that scripture. Luke chapter 16. He was in torments, plural. 
More than one. Mom. Good. Right. Yeah. But Abraham said, Son, remember the doubt in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. The tables have turned. What well, he thought he was living the good life here, he was preparing himself for torment and hell. And while Lazarus was sac sacrificing and suffering here, he found himself in paradise. Praise God. In verse 26, and beside all this, this is still Abraham talking to the rich man, and beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. I'd say there's a lot of folks in hell right now that can make that trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go across that gulf and find themselves in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have that option anymore. No, no. They gave that up when they took their last breath. Right. When they had to confess Jesus. Right. Right. So Abraham laid it out to him, playing simple. Y'all can't come up here and we can't come down there. Then in verse 27 he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wilt send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So, he had eyes. He had a tongue that was burning. He was in torment. And he had a memory. And I've said it in Sunday school before, for those of you who haven't heard it. The worst thing that I believe the worst part of hell is, is going to be the fact that you know that you had a chance. You've had many people knock on your door. You've had many. You've sat through many messages and sermons. You've been testified to. You know the word of God, and that it's a free gift, and you chose not to receive it. And then you have, as in this case, five brothers in his father's house that were also going to come and burn. Not going to be a party down there. You're not going to be welcoming your 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 kin folks and your friends. You don't want them to be there once you get there. That's right. But then the choices have all been made. Because when you choose not to choose God, you've already made a choice. So that memory will go on for eternity. Right. There's no stopping for it. I remember that old country boy that stood up there and looked like a hippie. And declared the word of God on June 24th of 2012. But I hung on to the back of that pew because I didn't want anybody to be seeing me come out and see Jesus. I didn't want to be embarrassed. Lord, help me. I wanted to go ahead and fight the Holy Spirit off and quench that spirit so that I wouldn't be called out in public. Yes. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Lord, help me. So I don't want to say, I'm not going to say, well, uh, for the sake of you not being embarrassed, we'll just go ahead and let you lift your hand up with every, eye, every head bowed and every eye closed. Come up here. Yes, sir. Put in the work at the altar. Because like Pastor Money said, it's a very holy place right there. That's where we come to meet God. And all are equal at the foot of the cross. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Look at what the, Jesus said here in verse 29. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them, let them hear them. They had the books of Moses. They had Isaiah. That was a common thing to, to have people. They didn't really at least to have one. The Bible's more like they are today where everybody has one available. Do you have your Bible with you today? Call it up if you did it. They didn't have that back then. It wasn't large prints. They didn't have printing presses that had to be done by hand. Yeah. But Abraham told him they've got Moses and the prophets. Let your brothers and your daddy hear them. Because in verse 30 he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they would repent. No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. And he said to him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Speak your hearts, Lord. Help us, Lord. 
Folks, if you're not reading your Bible on a daily basis, if you're not praying and calling out to God on a daily basis, and I don't mean treating him like a cosmic genie in a bottle, saying, Lord, I need this and I need that. I need a new job. My, my health is failing. My mama's sick. I need something going on here, Father. No, you need to be giving thanks for the breath that you take, the fact that you woke up again this morning. Yes. Give him thanks for every day. So does that sound like a place that you want to go to? No. To go to hell? No. And burn with that rich man that's still there today? He's still there. He's not getting out. There's no parole. There's no early out for good behavior. It's an eternal sentence. And the rich man is shared by all who rejected God's plan of salvation. You either receive it or you reject it. So that was the third thing. The fourth thing today is the solution to all that. Yes, sir. So that you won't have the share of the rich man's fate. That's why we call this the gospel or the good news of Christ. Because when He gave us grace on the cross, that salvation was poured out upon us. And it's a free gift. No strings attached, save one. That is, once you receive Christ as your Savior, the devil puts a big old bulls eye right on your heart. Is he going to try to tear you down every way he can? If you think you had it hard before you gave your life to Christ, it's going to get harder until he realizes that somebody saw us like me and others that have stuck around for the long duration, that he can't have his way with us, that he might back off just a little bit. He's, he's still going to tear us, tear us up as best he can. He's like a roaring lion seeking to do man's devour. He's going to try to tear us up the best he can. But I'll tell you what, you put on that whole armor of God, and he don't stand a chance. So we see Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and I've read this scripture to many folks that I've helped lead to the Lord. And I say help because it's never been me. It's always the Holy Spirit that has to draw. But we need to be an encouragement to them and tell them how simple it is. Yes. And like Pastor Mundy said, that should be our goal. Right. See some saved and lives changed. Pastor yeah, I'm sorry, Pastor Friday. You got the day of the week wrong, didn't you? Yeah, Billy Friday. Billy Friday. Billy Friday. Chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It's, it's this simple. The third word in that verse 8 is what really makes the difference, folks. Yeah. You need to keep this mark, bookmark it, highlight it, keep it handy, because you may in fact find someone that needs this, this verse. You may in fact find that sinner that's lost and undone that needs Jesus, and you might be unprepared if you don't know it. And I've found it to be true that if you take it straight from the book, you don't misquote, you don't miss words, you don't leave anything out, you don't add anything to, take it directly out of the book. So keep it handy, folks. And you don't have to go around with the Bible tucked under your arm to be a good witness for Jesus. But you better have it tucked away in your heart. Yes, sir. Yeah. To be able to share it and open it up to those folks that need it so desperately in the world. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. He gave it to us. Thank you. So many don't want it. They push it away. Say, no, not, that's not for me. I'm still living the way I want to live. I'm going to do that until the day I die. I'm going to do it, folks. Verse 9 says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. So we can't work our way into heaven. We can't work our way to be good enough to get grace. But I'm going to tell you something else. You can't be bad enough to lose God's love. There's nothing you've you ever done. Praise God. If you murder, rape, and rob, God still loves you, and that grace is still available. But then once you accept that grace, and you accept that gift of salvation, you can't do those things anymore. See, I still get high as often as I want to. I still drink as often as I want to. Yes. I curse like a sailor as often as I want to. No, but you know what? My want to's have changed. That's right. I want to be able to say to you, God, God is in me. Amen. It needs to be in you. Because I've received.
receive that gift. Yes. And I thank you so much for it. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. By his sacrifice, his crucifixion, that you can find at the end of the chapter of all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all speak of crucifixion. When they stretch his arms out, begin to bang those nails in. His feet, they bang those nails in. And they dropped him in the ground. And that thud was heard all over Jerusalem. And that blood poured out of his body. He gave it all for you. And that's the gift. It might not cost you anything. But your way of life, you're not being able to go hang out with your buddies and things. It might cost you a few drinking buddies from back in the, back in the day. But it cost him everything. And I gladly make that sacrifice for him. The last chapter and verse that we'll be talking about today is Romans chapter 10. keep this highlighted for you for your mission on the road because we all have a mission. Amen. Jesus said, I have chosen you and ordained you that you may go forth and bear much fruit and that your fruit should remain. Yes. So it's not a temporary thing. He's chosen every one of us to do that. If you have the ability to walk and talk, even if you can't walk, if you can pick up the telephone, you can talk to someone Tell them about the gift of Jesus, and that's his sacrifice for your sins. So keep this verse handy as well. We call it Romans TNT, for those of us old timers, because it's 10, 9, and 10. We're going to go a little further today on that. Down to verse 13. Yes. All the way. Because this is where the confession comes in again. Remember we talked about every going every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess? Yeah. This is where that confession comes in. You can do this now so that you don't have to worry about confessing before God then. Beginning in verse 9 says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Those are the conditions, folks. To confess and believe that Jesus died and rose again. Now Jesus had been born and lived his life and then he reached the age of 30 and was baptized and began his ministry. And then he went around the world healing folks and raising folks from the dead and turning water into wine and feeding multitudes with a little boy's lunch basket. If he had done those things, then died and went to the grave, then it said, well, he's a pretty good fellow. He's pretty nice. He was a good prophet. Then it said he was a good man and not the God man. But I'm going to tell you something. He rose from the grave. Yes. Right. Yeah. You just say that. That he died and rose again. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the, between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Yes. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Call on him today, folks. Amen. Give your life to him. He's not asking much. He gave his life for you. Wouldn't you just give it back? Give yours back to him. Doesn't that seem like a bear trade? Yes. He died for us so that we would live for him. If you're not doing that today, you don't know him in that personal relationship. You've not already made that confession. Know that you will stand before God one day. And 
confess your sins. When the multitudes of people, the billions of people that are going to be standing at that great white throne to be judged, when Jesus walks through, you say, okay, that one, that one, that one over there, Father, all these over here, y'all get up and come with me. We're going to the front of the line. These are my children. These are the ones that confess me and believe and carry my word. They accepted me. So now I'm accepting them and bringing them before you. Don't think you're going, don't think you're going to get out of debt. It's inevitable. Don't think you're going to get out of judgment. You will stand before God in judgment. And if you have the opportunity today to walk out, turn that invitation down once again. But if you die and go to hell, you've got to walk across the blood of Jesus to get there. Right. And you will remember me standing up here today and giving you that opportunity oh, once again yes. Yes. at this appointed yes. time. It's like Pastor David said in Sunday school today, we didn't just show up here by coincidence. The circumstances and events that God lined up to put us in this house today for this appointed time were His doing. That's right. As evil as you think that the devil might have done, he might have used alcohol, drug addiction, all kinds of other things to get you in a heaven sent home. You might have used a, a neighbor's testimony. Whatever might, may, might be the circumstance. He had this time set up to put you in this place today to hear this word. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Now I feel honored and privileged to be able to speak his word to you. Yes. Now I'm going to give you that opportunity, that invitation to come and accept it. Confess it. Don't deny it. Do it today. Tomorrow may not come. Won't you come?
surrendered to your will. Live for you. Remain for both of our days. Come with us throughout our travels this week. Leave those into our path that we might be able to witness to. That we'd be able to commit the gospel into our hearts and our minds so that we can share that with those that we come in contact with so that they too can see there is a way out of this terrible place called hell. And it's one prayer away. Father, we thank you for this body of believers that are here today. Bless each one of us. Thank you for our pastor for leadership, for being true, for being faithful, and holding on to fight the good fight and run the good race. Throughout our journey this week, keep us safe until we come to see your house again. In Jesus' mighty and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.